spectacular, really. You know, um, this is such a, an amazing plat. I just did, there's a, there's a certain vibe here, you know, that's a, I find a very energetic, you know, it's really a, a cool place. I can feel it the minute I got here. And of course, you know, the history of, of, of Greece is, is amazing. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing to look up at the, you know, the Acropolis and think of all, all the armies that came through here, all the stuff that happened, you know, here. It's, it's, a, it's amazing. It's great. Uh, I mean, it, it turns out that rock and roll actually lends itself pretty well to that format. You know, so it's, it's kind of orchestral in a way anyway. And, you know, it just it kind of can be added on to that and fit right in. I think it's going to be mostly Survivor songs. One of mine from my solo album, Dark Light, a song called Hope. I'm playing that. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we are going to join together at the end and do, do a Rolling Stones song. Mm -hmm. Paint it black because, uh, you know, Charlie Watts. The last thing I wanted to do was try to make a make another Survivor album. You know, I mean, I wanted to make one of my own, and they're all my songs, so you know they're gonna they're gonna be different. But, say, having said that, it does have that some feel to it. It's you know it's it's uh, you know pop rock or whatever. So you know I was working on it all the time <laughs> for a long time. <clears throat> I don't know. I guess I, I sort of had trouble finding the right people to bring it to bring it home. You know, and, I, and then when I did though, I knew I knew I found the right people like the guy who produced it, uh, Stephen Dakutis, you know, and he also plays, there's a lot of his guitar work on that. It's really great having a, a producer who can play guitar really well and see if you need anything, he can, he can do it, you know, so uh, I think that's, that's, that's my answer. It, it took so long. <laughs> Amazing to me because that you know that that was in the early days you know of, of uh, MTV, yeah. and you know pretty by by today's standards very low pr low production you know kind of a thing. But but it does have a certain cool thing to it. You know I think the 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 guy who shot it we shot it in San Francisco. I remember it very well. You know I even remember going out to dinner because we went to this Thai restaurant, and I wasn't really familiar with you know you got to be careful at a Thai restaurant, especially a really authentic one because you can get some stuff. I took a bite of my food <laughs> and I thought I'd swallowed a hot poker. You know, it was so hot, man. I could not, I couldn't eat it. What I can't remember is I can't remember the director's name for, for some reason. I, I'm sure I could probably look it up, but um, it, you know, that was his idea, his concept to do all that stuff. We didn't, we didn't really know. I'm surprised it's been watched like two billion times or something like that. That surprises me. We recorded the song, he heard it, he thought it was great. Um, he wanted to come down and match it up to, to, uh, to it was getting very close to production a deadline. He wanted to come down and match it to the, to the film and, and look at it. So we went to a studio uh, and he came down and you know hung out with us for a while and watched. He said, "Yeah, this is great," and he was very funny and witty and you know uh, charming. You know, greatest challenge to save his honor, his marriage, and his manhood against his most devastating and dangerous opponent. I'll bust you out. Go for it. It kind of is, but maybe that's just you know because I'm you know we're, I'm involved in it. But I thought I thought that was a good uh, that it was cool because that's why he brought us in. He wanted to to, to freshen it up, you know. With Bill Conti had done all the soundtrack for the for the movies before, and he wanted a rock band in it. And I think that was a smart thing to do. I think that really helped. And I remember going to the theater, you know, when it came to the theaters. I remember going and just sat down with everybody else. And after the the opening song, everybody stood up and clapped. <laughs> So I thought, man, this has got to be the most incredible promotional uh, vehicle of all time. I, I, I could see that coming, yeah. you know. I don't really know for sure, you know. Um, it's just, it's, it's a sophomore, that wasn't our sophomore, that was our third album, I Had the Tiger was our third record, and Caught in the Game our fourth, um, but I think it's just hard to follow up an album like that, or, or a song like that, and I thought, I actually thought Caught in the Game was pretty cool, you know, but it just didn't, you know, for whatever reasons, you know, per, I don't know, with the record company, I don't know, you know, but something you know, it didn't really sell very well.
It, it was really tough because we were in the middle of this huge tour, you know, Ariel Speedwagon, and uh, it was promoting that record, but you gotta do, and you know, yeah, I got a polyp on my vocal cords, and so I had to get it removed right in the middle of the tour. We stopped, we went off, I went to the doctor and removed it, and two weeks later I was back on the road, which is not recommended, by the way. It's not really the recommendation that most doctors would uh, recommend any singer. And it put a lot of pressure on me, and there, there was a lot of pressure, you know, from everybody. So, yeah, it, it got pretty rough, you know. I do. Like I said, I, I think the pandemic had something to do with that. People um, valuing... Uh, like the the stuff that that stands the test of time, you know. Yeah. Um, and there's so much of that music that did, you know. And I like I saw Metallica doing it, "Nothing Else Matters" with the with the uh, uh, San Francisco Symphony Orchestra. It's like, man, I mean, wow. Boy, that's a really hard question to answer. I've got an iPad full of records that are all, I've probably got a hundred candidates for that, you know. I go, I'll go back to listen to Revolver a lot because it just still sounds to me, you know, Beatles Revolver, still sounds spectacular. You know, the recording quality is superb, you know, everything that they did was, you know, just, fan, uh, just well, they really uh, laid the groundwork for everybody else as far as, you know, recording uh, rock music. and. Uh, so, maybe. maybe. Do, you, do you prefer the second or the first period of Beatles? Oh, I, don't, I like them both. I, yeah, I like the way they evolved, actually. And I, when I got Sgt. Pepper, I listened to Sar Sgt. Pepper probably 50 times in a row in my room. And my mom was like, <laughs> oh my God, I, I drove her absolutely crazy. So.